I would like to thank the organizer for giving me the opportunity to talk in this conference. So my talk will be divided in three parts. First, I will talk about, uh, let's say, convergence of sequences of metric space. metric spaces and Ricci flows. So that will be just a recall of some now classic definitions. The second part will be devoted to the presentation of some useful estimates by which were discovered by Miles Simon in three dimensions. And then we will go to the applications. Okay, so first part, we will talk about convergence of sequences of metric space first. And we will give some basic fact about the gramoff hausdorff distance and convergence that we will need in the sequel. So let's begin with a definition. Let x dx and y dy be compact metric spaces. F, an application from X to Y. Maybe almost everything, yeah, even everything it doesn't need to be continuous or anything like that. So this application is said to be an epsilon isometry If, so we have two conditions. First, for any x and x prime in x. So up to epsilon, it's an isometry. So that's this fact. dx x prime minus d of f of x, f of x prime is less than epsilon. Absolute values, of course. And uh, the second condition is this one. The soup for y in y of dy from y to f of x is less than epsilon. So it says that it covers the whole metric space y up to epsilon. Okay, so this is the definition of an epsilon isometry. Now I will define the gramoff hausdorff distance. So it is a distance between metric space. So when there's no confusion, I want to uh, precise the distance here but when it matters, I will try to not to forget it. So the gramoff hausdorff distance between x and y is equal to the infimum of the positive epsilon such that there exists f from x to y epsilon isometry, and there exists g from y to x, which is also an epsilon isometry. So I said gramoff hausdorff distance, so y distance, because of this theorem. So dgh is a distance on we write it like that, compact 
metric spaces up to isometric. So the compact here is important. For example, the gromov hilsdorf distance between a real interval and its intersection with Q is always equal to zero. So, it, so that won't be a distance in this case. So now another definition. And after we will give some examples. Um, so yeah, compact metric spaces are good, but what to do with non-compact metric spaces? We have to be a little more careful. So, uh, yeah, of course, since this is a distance, we can talk about converging sequence. That's just uh, xi di is converging to xd if dgh of xi di xd is going to zero. That's not a, a big deal. So, but now with non compact metric spaces, how do we do? So, let x. I, dy, xi, so this is a sequence of metric spaces and another metric spaces, metric space. So we will add a technical condition such that closed bounded subsets are compact. So maybe it's not the most natural condition, but it, it will be enough for our purpose. Uh, then <coughs> we say that x i d i little x i converge in the gromov hausdorff sense to x d x. Oh, I forgot to say. Uh, to deal with non-compact spaces, <coughs> we have to be careful, and the convergence will be for pointed spaces. So xi is a point in big xi, and x is a point in big x. So we have this convergence if, uh, if and only if, that's a definition. For any r greater than zero, we have this convergence, which is a convergence of compact metric spaces. So that's the ball for di, the closed ball, which is compact with our uh, assumptions. Xi r with the metric uh, converge in the gromov hausdorff sense as i goes to infinity to the ball in x. So little x r with the distance d. OK. Uh, some examples to get uh, for those who are not too familiar with this kind of thing. Um, if I take a sequence of flat sori like this or with length one here and one over i here. So when i goes to infinity, it converges in the gromov hausdorff sense to just the circle S1 of length one. So you it's really, uh, uh, it's quite visual. You just uh, shrink this part and you will just get a circle at the end. Uh, another useful uh, example, which will be, which I will use the, in the sequel. Um, X dy. So now I don't change the, the set. I just change the distance. Be, uh, 
where the i in metric space such that uh, di as a function on x cross x converges to some metric to some distance d and I ask the convergence to be uniform uniformly on compact of x of x cro cross x in the in fact then and I also ask d to be a distance uh, tuples of d is a distance then we have this kind of convergence of metric spaces is in fact stronger than the one than the gromov hausdorff convergence. So, okay, as i goes to infinity. So, and here it's really simple. The, the epsilon isometries will uh, just be the, the, the identity from x to x. And with the definition of uniform convergence, you have uh, what you want. So, now did I say, okay. Now, let's talk a bit about uh, sequences of Ricci flows. So first, uh, a Ricci flow is a family of metrics indexed by a time parameter such that dg over dt is equal to minus two the Ricci tensor of GT. So uh, it was introduced by Hamilton in 1992, where uh, he proved that if the Ricci tensor is strictly positive on a compact manifold, then you have, in a sense, a convergence to a round metric. And uh, we have short time existence for compact initial conditions. And for non-compact with bounded curvature, that's work of Hamilton and Xi. So now, why to why consider sequence of Ricci flow? I will I will write R F for Ricci flow. So one big motivation for this is a singularity analysis. So I won't say precisely how it is used, but I will try to give an idea. So you have short time existence for this equation, but in general, you don't have long time existence. So imagine you have your manifolds mg of zero. It's uh, shaped like a dumbbell. And this is the, the time axis. And it will evolve. And at some times, things, it happens, and it happens often, in fact, that things go bad here. You have a singularity. So, one uh, really essential thing, if you want to understand the flow, is to study the singularities. Um, and really just to care about the singularity and not the whole geometric object. And how do you do that? You make a sequence of zooms, in fact, around the singularity. And you get a new Ricci flow. And so which, yeah, my drawings may be bad. I apologize for that. And so on with a new time variable. And you, you do this at each time. And 
the hope, and in three dimensions, for example, it, it work, uh, is that by successive zooms, Uh, you con you construct a sequence of Ricci flow now in some time interval, and if the sequence has a limit. It will give, it will help understand the singularity. Understand the singularity. So, so now, yeah, what should be a limit of Ricci flows? So, that's another definition. So, Maybe the last one of the talk. So we have a sequence of Ricci flows on some manifold MIs. So we assume that all the manifolds have the same dimension. And on some time interval, I will call it alpha omega, the sequence of Ricci flows. So anyone in this sequence satisfy this equation? So uh, it's said to converge. So one should add uh, in the Chigger Gramoff Hamilton sense. So, oh, sorry. Once again, I forgot the point. So that's pointed Ricci flow. So PI is some point in the manifold. If there exists some exhaustion of the limit m, oh, sorry, I forgot some piece of the definition. So, a sequence of Ricci flow is set to converge to another pointed Ricci flow, m g of t p, t in the same time interval. So, if there exists an exhaustion of M by exhaustion O N by open bounded sets. N uh, diffeomorphism by i from ui to mi. So, uh, how to say it shortly? Let's say local diffeomorphism which are diffeomorphism on their image. Image and such that, so phi i star, the pullback of g i by the diffeomorphism phi i, Converge to 
G, so there's a T here. We are dealing with Ricci flow. So I would say C infinity. So if, the, if those things are not compact, it's C infinity on every compact subset of M. And of M, let's say, on compact. included in M cross alpha omega. OK. That's the definition of the talk. That's good. So <coughs> uh, well, I have defined convergence or distance. But what we need is why are they good? Because we have compactness theorems. So the first one is for the gromov hausdorff distance. It's due to Gromov. It said that if mi, ji, pi, so this is a sequence of Riemannian manifold of the same dimension, satisfies. That the Ricci tensor of GI is bounded from below by some constant, where K is any real constant, then it GH subconverge. So it has a convergence subsequence, subconverges. So that's, the, that's really the, the strength of the gromov hausdorff distance, is that uh, you cover finding a convergence subsequence is quite easy. On the other hand, the uh, convergence for Ricci flow is much stronger. So you have deformorphism and C infinity convergence. So the compactness theorem won't be as simple. So uh, if now I have a sequence of Ricci flows are in the defined on the same time interval. Are Ricci flows such that um, first assumption is that the sub of the full Riemann curvature tensor of GI on the time interval, uh, I ask this to be bounded by some constant, which doesn't depend on i. And second, oh, I need something more, just technical. I suppose that 0 is in the interval alpha omega. And two, I ask that the injectivity radius of GI, but just at zero here, of uh, MI, of PI, sorry, is greater than some delta which doesn't depend on I, then it has a converging subsequence. So then, M I G I of T P I subconverges. And the uh, convergence is infinity. So uh, okay, that's it for the first part. Now the second will be so the yeah, I forgot to say. Uh, this theorem is due to Hamilton in 95, I guess. Let's write it. Hamilton, 95. OK, so now second part of the talk, which will be quite simple. I will uh, just state a theorem, which was proven by Miles Simon in 2009, which will give really useful estimate 
in three dimension to help a sequence of Ricci flow to satisfy this kind of uh, hypothesis. Oh, so let's go with the theorem. So it's due to Simon in uh, 2009. I will need my notes for this. OK. So it says this thing. And now, from uh, now to the end of the talk, we will assume that we work only with three-dimensional Ricci flows. So uh, the theorem is this one. For any v0 and k, so v0 is positive, k is any real constant, one can find some big K, uh, big K is positive, and big T is positive, such that if M3 G0 is complete with bounded curvature, uh, we'll write it BC, and satisfies two assumptions. So the assumptions are basically this one. First, I ask for the Ricci curvature of G0 to be bounded by K. So Ricci of G0 is greater than, let's say, minus K G0, and then so this is a Ricci curvature bounded from below. And then I ask a kind of non-collapsing property, which say that for any x in M, the volume of the ball for the distance associated to G0 of radius 1 is greater than some V0. So it just say that the the ball can't be too small in volume. So, and I should uh, say that with the bishop gromov comparison theorem, since you have this, you have this kind of property for any radius, not just for radius one. So, then uh, I will write the conclusion of the theorem here. Then, uh, the solution G of T of the Ricci flow with G of zero, which is equal to G zero at time zero, exists at least for t in zero big t and satisfies some analogous of this uh, equation. So first, we still have We'll call it i t because it will depends of t. Uh, we still have this uh, boundedness of the Ricci curvature. Ricci of g of t is greater, so the constant may be worse, but it's still good to have this estimate. Then two t. Then we also have that the, the non-collapsing property still holds for any x in M. So these estimates are true for all t. Yeah, we write it this way. Um, so for any x in M, the volume 
with respect to g of t of the ball for g of t of center x and radius 1. So it may have uh, get a bit worse, but in a controlled way. It's still greater than v0 over 2. And we have extra estimates, still depending on t. So the sub on m of the norm of the Riemann tensor of gi of t is greater than k over t. Did I ask k to be positive? Yeah, OK. And false estimate, it's a distance estimate, which will help us a lot in studying the, the geometry of such manifold. It's, uh, so suppose we have two times, so S, T, and uh, for me, I will write DT to be, uh, the G of T to be the Riemannian distance for the metric G of T, Riemannian distance. So we have uh, a nice estimate. So d g of s is so minus k square root of t minus square root of s. Yeah, it's a good way. Is less than d g of t, which is left that exponential k t minus s uh, d g of s. So. We, the strength of this theorem is that from quite weak hypothesis on the initial manifold, we get, uh, yes, that just for short time, but we get quite strong control on the solution. So in particular, we have no, we just know that the curvature is bounded, but we don't know by why. And we just flow the metric for a little time, and we will have a uniform bound on the curvature under this, uh, this non-collapsing assumption. So it's a, it's a good theorem. And it has interesting application that I will describe now. So that's the third part of the talk, some applications. <coughs> so how much time is left? Uh, OK. So first, I will uh, sketch the original application that uh, Miles Simon gave on his, uh, in his paper. Uh, the, paper, the paper is called uh, Ricci Flow of Non-Collapsed Three Manifolds Whose Ricci Curvature is Bounded from Below. It's, uh, it's on the archive. You can find it uh, easily. So uh, I will uh, state it this way. Non-Collapsed Gromov-Hausdorff Limit of three manifolds, manifolds with uh, Ricci curvature bounded from below are three manifolds. So let's make the statement a bit more precise. I take a sequence of three dimensional manifolds, mi, ji. So, uh, three dimensional manifolds such that, such that. I ask, in fact, basically the, the hypothesis of the theorem to O. So, one, the Ricci curvature is bounded from below. And two, each manifold is non-collapsed. So for any x in mi, uh, there exists, no, the volume 
with respect to GI of the ball is greater than some V0. So I asked these estimates to be independent of T. Uh, oh, forget the point. Then any GH limit of the sequence M I J I P I so is a metric space X that doesn't say anything X D little X with where X is homeomorphic to uh, three manifolds. So this is quite a nice theorem because, uh, as I said in the beginning, gromov hausdorff convergence is a uh, a very weak notion of convergence. So you can lose dimension. I showed you the, this uh, example of shrinking tori, which were two-dimensional and go to one-dimensional. You can have something which will not be anymore a manifold. But this theorem tells you that in this case, even if the metric could be not good enough to be a, a Riemannian metric to come from a Riemannian metric, at the topology level, the manifold will look good. Okay. So, <coughs> yes. We'll sketch the proof because it's nice and because I will use some fact of this proof in the other applications. So, <coughs> what is the so suppose I take a limit. So uh, up to a subsequence by uh, the compactness theorem I written, these things, ji, pi, goes in the gromov hausdorff sense to some metric space x, d, little x. Now, flow each of the GIs by which you flow. So this gives some GI of T and by the theorem I written there it exists on the interval 0 T. So and it's quite important. In fact it's the maybe it's the, the most important fact in the theorem. So GIT exists on zero T and satisfies all the assumption, the estimates. Satisfy one to four sub T. So now I want to, is it already there? Yeah. I want to apply this theorem. So to get, uh, to make my sequence of Ricci flow converge. No, because you, I asked for this, for this estimate on the sequence, and maybe I didn't emphasize enough here. The, this theorem here said that if you have this bound, so you can find some t where, yeah. So t here does, only depends on k and v0. And same for big K. OK. So <coughs> we have uh, these estimates. And uh, we will be able to construct. So now I pick some T naught. 
which is equal to big T over two, why not? And I will ask at T equal T naught, we have bounded curvature. That's the estimate three sub T. Just make uh, T equal T naught here that will give you a uniform bound on the curvature. And we have the non-collapsing property. That's the second estimate. So here, there's a bit of black box, namely a theorem of Chigger, Gromov, and Taylor. which tells you that the injectivity radius of GI of T naught at PI is greater than some delta uniformly in I again. So we have the first part I will yeah, I will erase the compactness theorem, so. The only thing that remains to be proved is the second part of the theorem. So, and the second part of the hypothesis will be just handled by three sub t, so it gives that the sub over, yeah, I will specialize the T later. Over MI of RM of JI of T is less than some big K over T. So we aren't exactly under the assumptions of our theorem because we would need a, a bound which is also uniform in T, but that's not the that's not a big deal, just take, take compact subset of zero T. There you have the, the uniform bound you need. And then you do a diagonal extraction and you will get the convergence that you need. So let's say Hamilton's theorem holds. Theorem holds. which give that mi ji of t pi converge, uh, well, I didn't give any symbol. I will put rf for Ricci flows to uh, is m. OK, I can pick m. That's good. Converge to some uh, Ricci flow. So, for t in zero, big T. Uh, so, what did we do? So, we have our gromov hausdorff convergence sequence. So, here is gromov hausdorff so This axis is the I axis. We have flown a little bit, each of the manifolds. So. And with the theorem of Miles Simon, it shows that the thing can go too wild. So we were able to extract here, in the sense of Ricci flow, uh, a, co a convergent subsequent. What remains to be proved is just that here, in a, in a certain way, things glue well. We want to show that the, the gromov hausdorff limit x is a three-manifold. So what we have to show is that x here, sorry, is homeomorphic to m. 
year. So how do you do that? So what time is it? Yeah, it will be a bit sketchy for this part. Uh, this, is little, this room here. So the estimate for sub t gives you good control on the distance on the dji of t, which gives uh, as the for which e flow the convergence is smooth. Though, so almost any geometric quantity will uh, converge in a good way at the limit. So this gives the same control on the g of t. And now. And this control, it allows us to see that as t goes to 0, dgt goes to some, um, let's call it d bar, d bar, which is a distance. on M. So this is as the convergence is uniform. So in particular, it's gromov hausdorff convergence. So we have this. And d bar. So it's still with the force estimate there. d bar defines the same topology. as the day JTs. So if I, and now still with 4 of t, in fact, 4 sub t gives, yeah, will be even more sketchy, enough uniformity to say, so that's the idea, but that's not the, the complete proof. You have to say just a little bit more, but that xd, uh, well, what's the name of my base point? x. So xd is this thing, the limit as t goes to 0. No. The limit as i goes to infinity of the limit as t goes to 0 of the mi ji of t. And the estimate for of t tells you that, in fact, you can exchange the limits. So t goes to 0, i goes to infinity of mi, once again, I forgot the base point, sorry, ji of t pi. And so I go to infinity with i, so I'm here. And this is just m d bar. m d bar and the base point is p. So up to isometry, the two spaces are the same. So they are isomorphic. So there's just a little bit work to be done here, but I will go through another application in the remaining time. <coughs> so what's the other application? And do I, yeah, maybe I didn't insist enough, but the, the proof of this theorem is, uh, is due to my Simon, not me. But this one is new. Uh, it is a finiteness result. So what is the theorem? It's given. 
and d positive, and v zero. Well, let's go with big V, it's more appropriate. And k a real number, there exists up to diffeomorphism. Only finitely many three manifolds which admit a metric G such that. So we as the following bounds to old. So, Richie Kovetra bounded from below. Yeah, minus doesn't help in any way. Uh, diameter bounded from above. No, of G. And volume of G. bounded from below. So, so there are many finiteness theorem uh, in Riemannian geometry starting from Chigurh's theorem in the, in the late 60s or early 60s, I don't remember. But they have stronger assumptions. Um, yeah, we'll go to the with the proof. So, what do I do? So the proof is by contradiction, and it's quite uh, a usual way to go from a compactness result to finiteness results. So assume. There exists a sequence of three manifolds, M, I, J, I. Oh, I will give names to these stuffs, A, B, C, with, with A, B, and C, and such that any two of the M, I's are non diffeomorphic. So, uh, if the theorem is false, I can build such a sequence. Now, what do I do? So, I rescale so that so that I can take d equal to one. That's not a big deal. Now what happened? So I still have my bound on the Ricci curvature. It will have changed by the rescaling, but uh, in a controlled way. It's called the bound K bar, J i. And if I mix these two things, I have that for any x in any of the MIs, the volume of the ball for GI of a center X and radius one, since the diameter is less than one, is greater than big V. So which gives that the estimates old. And how do I conclude now? So, as in the proof on the first theorem, so I will pick a random point, any point, GI in MI. 
and I will have that the Ricci flows, which are all defined on the same time interval, converge to some limit Ricci flow. And how do I conclude? If you recall the, the definition for the convergence of Ricci flows, there's a, a fact that if M is compact, then the MIs are diffio to M for R for I large enough. So all I have to do is to show that M is compact and say, assume that any two of the MIs are non-diffeomorphic, that will give the contradiction. And how do I do that? Well, I lost my estimate, but one could check that 40 implies this thing, that the diameter of Ji of T is less than exponential kT. And as I said, since uh, convergence of Ricci flow is a C infinity convergence, it will give the same bound for the limit flow, less than exponential kT. Let's say for T. This was for T in zero T closed at zero, uh, big T, sorry. And this one is just open at zero. But this gives enough, this gives that M is compact, because it is complete. So this ends the proof of the following theorem. Uh, do I have three more minutes to make some comments? Okay. Uh, first comment. <coughs> so comment. Uh, so Anderson and Chigger. Proved similar theorem theorems with stronger assumption so the first one designed papers at the beginning of the nineties don't remember the exact year. So I will just say what the assumptions are. So first one is this one. They ask the Ricci to be bounded. Yeah. I prefer to write it this way. Minus kg, kg from both sides. From the ask for the two other condition, the diameter of G to be less than V, the volume of G to be bigger than V, and they have an extra condition, is that the D over two norm of the full Riemann curvature tensor is less than some other constant. Then they can get a finite less theorem. Uh, and it's totally uh, independent of Ricci flow. It's more harmonic radius estimates, and things like that. Uh, and the other is closer to the one I described. So just the bound from below on the Ricci curvature, uh, a diameter bound, and uh, an injectivity radius. Bound. Well, injectivity radius of G is greater than some delta. So that's 
stronger assumptions. And oh. <coughs> so they have finite less results under one of these two conditions. Let's give it mm, a number. And last common in this one, theorem one cannot hold in higher dimensions. So it is just a purely three-dimensional fact. Uh, and as a last word, it's funny. There are counterexamples which have been constructed constructed by Perelman before his work on Ricci flow in the mid 90s. It's on uh, uh, connected sums. of uh, many CP2. I don't know the exact constructions. So it's an example on, in four dimension. And if you take the, the product with R, it will give counter examples in any dimension. So that's the end of my talk. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>